These machines do not merely lift tons of steel. They are the sinews and tendons that uphold the human ambition to touch the sky. From the ground to the clouds, there is one universal law that must be defied, over and over again. Gravity. The real question, therefore, is not simply how much they can lift, but the far more compelling puzzle of how a structure weighing over 200 tons manages to rise hundreds of meters into the air without the aid of an even larger crane. The answer to this stands as one of modern engineering's greatest and most elegant triumphs. At the heart of every growing metropolis lies a brilliant paradox. The truth that the world's tallest skyscrapers could not exist without a machine that, even before hoisting the first steel beam for their construction, had to build itself from the ground up. This paradox, transformed into a masterpiece of hydraulic innovation, is the tower crane, the true unsung architect of the sky. Today, we will uncover its secret. The problem itself is as ancient as vertical construction. To build something tall, you need a crane. But to place that crane, you would need an even taller one. This paradox once seemed unsolvable until engineering found a way to create a machine capable of climbing its own structure. Without this pivotal advancement, the modern skylines of Dubai, New York, or Shanghai would simply be impossible. At the Burj Khalifa, for instance, Favel Favco tower cranes ascended more than 800 meters above the ground, with standing winds powerful enough to bend their two-meter-thick masts without collapsing. What was once a heroic feat is now standard practice. But the secret lies not in raw strength, but in absolute precision. And it is here that engineering enters its most unforgiving territory. Zero margin for error. A deviation of just 3 millimeters in a single bolt can compromise the balance of the entire structure. A miscalculated gust of wind can set off a chain reaction, a domino effect capable of shearing a massive counterweight, snapping critical cables, and collapsing an entire tower. The operators work hundreds of meters above the ground. At that altitude, the margin for human error vanishes. In that environment, precision is not a virtue. It is a condition for survival. Every break, every sensor, every calculation of torque is engineered to prevent a structure weighing more than a commercial airliner from becoming a steel projectile plummeting from the sky. This is why, before every single lift, operators meticulously verify angles, load weight, and wind speed. A single failure can mean millions in losses, or something far worse. Stability is non-negotiable. Perfection is mandatory. But it all begins on the ground, literally. Before the crane can rise a single meter, it must first put down its roots. A reinforced concrete foundation is excavated, laced with steel, which can weigh more than 400 tons and reach depths of up to 20 meters. This foundation is not optional, it is the critical element that maintains the stability of the entire structure. It must withstand immense forces of torsion, wind, and dynamic load. Its cost can exceed $300,000 and its pour must be executed in a single, continuous, uninterrupted operation. It is the first great engineering test. A perfectly crafted block upon which a steel giant, which cannot afford to shift a single centimeter, will rest. Upon this base, the first mast sections are installed. These are hollow steel modules measuring between 3 and 6 meters long and weighing up to 10 tons each. They are assembled one atop the other with high-tension bolts slowly forming the vertical skeleton of the crane. Atop this mast, the operator's cab is mounted, along with the slewing unit, and the boom, the horizontal arm that can extend up to 80 meters. On the opposite end, the counterweight is positioned. Massive blocks of concrete or steel that balance loads of up to 20 tons to offset the lifted weight. The entire assembly weighs roughly 200 tons and can lift between 10 and 20 tons in a single hoist. Unlike mobile hydraulic cranes, tower cranes operate with powerful electric motors that rotate cable drums with pinpoint precision, allowing materials to be lifted hundreds of meters with smoothness and total control. At this point, the crane is complete, but its initial height is merely the beginning. As the building rises, the crane must rise with it. And this is where the true mechanical miracle takes place. Directly beneath the operator's cab, a specialized structure is installed, the climbing frame or hydraulic climbing cage. It functions as a kind of steel exoskeleton that encircles the mast and supports the crane's entire upper section. 
Inside this robust frame, powerful hydraulic jacks are positioned, engineered to lift the complete upper works, the cab, the boom, the counterweights, and the slewing system. A combined mass weighing well over 150 tons. The process is initiated by hoisting a new mast section from the ground to the working level. Once this section is ready, the hydraulic jacks engage, pushing the massive upper assembly upward to create a precise gap of roughly 3 meters. Into this carefully opened space, crews meticulously maneuver and insert the new module, securing it with high-strength bolts before the system retracts. The crane has just completed a cycle of self-growth. Each climb lasts about an hour, but it requires absolute, flawlessly timed synchronization between man and machine. A miscalculation of just a few millimeters during this operation could lead to a catastrophic failure of the entire structure. This critical process is repeated as many times as the building has floors. As the tower rises higher, the crane also faces its greatest enemy, the wind. At 250 meters of elevation, a gust of 70 kilometers per hour can generate destabilizing forces capable of compromising the entire assembly. This is why tower cranes are anchored to the building's core structure using steel ties, typically placed every 15 to 20 floors. These connection points fuse the crane and the skyscraper into a single integrated entity. The skyscraper provides essential stability, while the crane gives it form. And when the wind exceeds safe operational limits, the operator performs a critical safety maneuver, all work is halted and the slewing brake is released. This allows the crane's upper section to weather vane, to swing freely and align itself with the direction of the wind, drastically reducing its surface area and the dangerous pressure upon it. At that altitude, survival is not a matter of brute strength, but of perfect equilibrium. The daily operation is a precise choreography. From the cab, the operator works with limited direct visibility, relying on radios and remote cameras. They coordinate the movement of the trolley gliding along the boom, the drum winding the cable, and the hook transporting its weight. Every maneuver is governed by sensors that will automatically halt the system if they detect an overload or excessive wind force. A single tower crane can serve an entire construction site, lifting steel beams, concrete panels, heavy machinery, or even hoisting other, smaller auxiliary cranes into place. Each lift represents an invisible equation of physics, electronics, and human precision. When the building finally reaches its full height, the crane will have climbed dozens of times. But now it faces its ultimate challenge, the descent. No external crane can reach it, so it must dismantle itself, inverting the very process of its ascent. The main crane's own hook is used to lower the mast sections, one by one, until it is reduced to its minimum initial height. Then, on the rooftop, a smaller lighter-duty auxiliary crane is assembled. This miniature version is specifically designed to dismantle the primary crane piece by piece. Finally, this mini crane too must disassemble itself, its parts lowered via the building's service elevator or by manual rigging. This is the closing of a cycle that began on the ground and ended in the clouds, a machine that erected itself, built a cityscape, and then vanished under its own power. Every one of these operations carries a significant price. Installing and operating a tower crane on a major skyscraper can easily exceed one and a half million dollars, with each day of delay costing thousands more. But the cost is justified, for without these self-erecting giants, the modern skyline as we know it would be impossible. Its ingenious design has enabled humanity to build upward, seemingly without limit. Every new leap in height, from the 300 meters of the Empire State Building to the 828 meters of the Burj Khalifa, is equally a monumental leap in crane engineering. So the next time you see a solitary crane atop a skeletal tower, remember this. It was not simply placed there. It climbed, step by deliberate step, building the world around it as it simultaneously built itself. What other engineering system do you believe deserves to be featured in a video like this? I'm reading your thoughts in the comments.